Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can play Mr. Brightside by The Killers in standard tuning. Now if you've ever learned this song or you've ever had to play it live, you'll know that you need the open E string to be able to play the main riff. Now unfortunately if you're doing this in the same key as the original which is D flat, it's not possible to use that open E string because you have a massive clash. Now I have figured out a quick hack, a workaround to do this so you can do it in standard tuning so there's no need to take a spare or second guitar, there's no need to retune if you ever need to do this with your band or a jam night. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to do it. In this video then, we are going to learn how to play Mr. Brightside in standard tuning. But, if you haven't done it already, hit like to like the video, click subscribe to subscribe to the channel, and hit that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. If you want the tab annotation in a workbook form, you'll see a link below in the description to a free workbook, so make sure you grab that. Right then, let's just get stuck in now. If you're anything like me and you've had to do this song at maybe a pub gig, a wedding or a corporate event or you just enjoy playing it but you kind of get sick of tuning your guitar down to play along with a record, I'm going to show you in this video a quick workaround. Now for many, many, many years I've been doing this song and every time it comes up on a set list I'm, I'm always kind of dreading it because unless the key is different, so unless we're doing it in D which is upper semitone, it's pretty hard to next to impossible to get the sound of the main riff until today then where I'm going to show you how you can actually do that so often when it's kind of been presented to me to play this song I've asked for it to be moved into D major the original key of the song is D flat but often that's not always possible for say the singer might not be able to sing it higher or you might be using backing tracks which are in D flat so I kind of needed to find a workaround. Now I did actually watch The Killers live and I'm not actually sure where the gig was but I noticed that the guitarist was using a capo. This is going to be what we're going to use for this entire video to get the riff in standard tuning. Now, I sort of looked at that and I thought, well, if it's good enough for the killer's guitarist to use a capo, then it's absolutely good enough to, for me, and let's just figure out exactly what he's doing. So, this is what I'm going to show you in this video. So, we're going to start off, I'm just going to play the original riff, how it was played on the record, but I'm going to be doing it in D major because my guitar is in standard tuning, and that all sounds like this. Now that's it in standard tuning in D major. Obviously using that high E string. Now if you grab the PDF workbook with the tab notation, you'll see that tabbed out. I'm not going to teach you how to play it that way. There'll be plenty of other videos on YouTube and tabs on the internet for that. In this video, I'm showing you the hack to be able to do it in standard tuning. Now, for me, I've been playing guitar a long time. I find that riff really hard. It's quite a stretch, you know, between your, your third and your fourth finger and you kind of have to hold it down all the way through. It's so easy to, to slip off a fret. So it's quite a hard riff anyway. Now, even looking at trying to do that in D flat, obviously if I moved that to the original key of D flat, we'd have to shift everything down, but I couldn't hit the open E string because it's a semitone out. And it kind of sounds terrible. now. Obviously a workaround would be to quickly tune your high E string, but if you're on some like a floating tremolo, it's gonna knock everything out. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So what we're gonna do then, with our capo, we're going to learn how to play that riff in D first, in D major, and then all we'll be doing is literally shifting it down a fret. So grab your capo and stick it in fret number five. Okay, so what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna play the riff in D major, so it's gonna sound exactly like the one I just did, like this. Okay, it's gonna sound exactly like that, only I'm going to be playing it in a different area of the neck, and that sounds like this. Okay, and can you hear it sounds the same as if I was to do it up this area of the neck? It sounds the same, it's the same notes. Now obviously tonally it's a little bit different because we are playing it on other strings. So naturally, if I was going to be playing everything as I am on the D, the G, the B and the high E, the tone is going to be sounding a little bit thinner. Also, that the, the open string carrying through does sound ever so slightly different. However, is it a massive noticeable difference if you were playing it live? 
Absolutely not. Because I've done this with a capo. Nobody has batted an eyelid. And it's a lot easier. Trying to play this as you're standing up, you know, you might be jumping around or whatever, is really, really hard trying to play it up this kind of end of the neck. It's so much easier down around this area of the neck with the capo. So obviously that's it now in D major. So what I'll do now, well, let's go to the original key of D flat. Okay, and then I'm gonna teach you how to play it in D flat with the capo. So first things first, let's grab our capo, and we're gonna put it in the fourth fret, okay? Stick it in the fourth fret, and everything's gonna be based around this area of the neck, okay? And the shapes we're going to be playing, we're gonna look at them as three chord shapes, and then I'll show you the picking around it. The first shape is going to be like this. Third finger in the 11th fret on the D, middle finger in the 10th fret on the G, first finger in the 9th fret on the high E. And we need to keep the open B string ringing out. Now, of course, that's playing that note there. The 4th fret is kind of covered by the capo. Okay, that's the first chord. Okay, we need to keep this pinky free, as you'll see why in a bit. Okay, so that's chord number 1. Okay, so let's move on to chord number 2. Place your middle finger in the 10th fret on the D, third finger in the 10th fret on the G, and that first finger is gonna stay where it was on the 9th fret on the high E. And again, we need to keep that open B string. That's chord two, so chord one, chord two. And then chord three looks like this. Okay, third finger in the 10th fret on the G, first finger in the 9th fret on the A, middle finger in the ninth fret on the high E, and also we need to keep that open B string. So the three chords look like this. And of course that third one happens twice, so it's one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three. Okay, so now let's talk about the picking. That's the first part. So we play D, G, E, G, B. D, G, E, G, B. Okay, so that's the first part. Next part goes like this. We're going to start using our pinky now to kind of create the rest of the riff. So the first part... Then you need to bring your pinky into the 11th fret on the high E. Then play the 9th fret on the high E. So all of that together sounds like this. And one more time. And then you simply just pluck the 11th fret on the D string again, or you can hit the open A string. It's the same note. To be honest, in the main riff, when the killers play, he hears it hitting like an open D string in between the chord changes, but you can't really notice it unless you're really kind of going into detail and getting nitpicky. So I wouldn't worry too much about the last note of the riff because you don't really notice it. But you can either hit the 11th fret on the D or the open A string. Okay, so let's just go round and round that first one, because once you get the hang of this picking part, the rest is pretty much the same, only with the different shapes. Okay, then we do the exact same thing with the next chord shape, but the picking is identical. So we're picking D, G, E, G, B, D, G, E, G, B, then little finger in the 11th, again on the high E, 9th fret on the high E, so that much so far. And then you can either hit the open A string or in the 10th fret on the D, it doesn't really matter. In the tab I've written it as the open A string. As I said, you're not gonna really notice it in the context of the lick, so don't worry too much about that. It's more of a sort of transition thing between the chords. So let me just do that chord again. And this time I'll do the first chord to the second chord. Okay, 
Okay, and then we move to the third chord. Again, it's very similar picking. The top three strings are exactly the same, but obviously this time our sort of root of the chord is the ninth fret on the A string. So the picking goes A, G, E, G, B. And again, A, G, E, G, B. Pinky on the 11th fret on the high E to the 9th fret note on the high E. 10 on the G. So let me do all of that slowly. And a little bit slower because that one's a bit more fiddly. Okay, so let's put those three chords together. It all sounds like this. Okay, that's the three chords together. Now, if I'm being completely honest, I was actually finding it harder to play it slowly than fast. So it's one of those things, when you get the hang of the picking, it will just naturally come out. When I was doing it slowly like that, I was really sort of having to think, but obviously when learning anything new, start slowly and gradually improve the speed. But what you'll find is when you get the hang of that, it's a lot easier to play fast. So let me just play that all a little bit faster. Okay, so what I was doing then when I play it fast, I also use a pull off on the top. Okay, so every time I'm playing 11 to 9, I'll do it as a pull off. I just find that a little bit easier for the picking now. That means it doesn't sound exactly like the original, but it's pretty close. Okay, so that's the main riff of Mr. Brightside in standard tuning. Obviously, yes, you need a capo, but what a great hack, and I do thank the Killers guitarist for doing that and me stealing the idea off him, because that has saved me so much stress on a lot of gigs, rather than worrying about how I'm gonna make this work in D flat, you know, with the riff all awkward up there, I literally just now just take a capo, stick it on, and now I'm kind of comfortable with the picking, I find it pretty easy, so it's one of those songs that always used to bug me, now I actually really, really enjoy playing. Now obviously you need to figure out the rest of the song with the chords, but you get some great voicings. <laughs> Okay, so you get some really great voicings and sound. I'm not gonna show you that in this video. If anyone is interested in me doing another video going through all of this song with a cap on the fourth fret, showing you that sort of stuff, comment below and if there's enough demand for it, I will make that. But as I said, this video is mainly for that main riff. So that's it, that's the Mr. Brightside hack in open tuning. For me, this was massive and I really, really hope that helps a lot of you out who play in this live, whether it's in jam nights, in weddings, corporate events, etc., etc. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you haven't done already, hit like to like the video, click subscribe to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. Also make sure you grab that workbook for all the tab annotation. In that workbook, there's the original riff in D major. I'll show you how to play it with a capo in the fifth fret in D major and then, in the original key with a capo in the fourth fret as I've shown you in this video. All that's in the workbook, so make sure you grab that, link below in the description. If you also haven't done it, come and check out my online guitar school, Fretlix, www.fretlix.com. Loads of great courses and lessons guaranteed to help you become a better guitarist. Hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you again soon.